Hi, I'm Les Campbell. Genealogy has been my passion for over 20 years. I'm a third year student studying genealogy at the National Institute for Genealogical Studies. My desire is to help you get started with your family tree. This is a basic video for beginners or for those who wish to brush up on their research skills. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools to start building your family tree. So let's get started. The followings would all discuss gathering information from home and recording this information with genealogy software or paper. A resource not to be missed. This is very important because some people do miss this resource and as a result they cannot solve some of their family roadblocks. Join a genealogical society. What value can a genealogical society offer. We'll discuss the benefits they offer and how they can advance your genealogy. To help you get started there are four forms. I will not explain how to complete these forms in detail since two of these forms will be completed as you enter the information in your genealogy software. You will need the first three forms to help you gather and record information from home. The fourth form is a research log. I was using the research log as a research plan. I later developed my own research plan. Let me explain this further in the next few minutes. There are other forms you can use. There are over 40 forms at the National Institute for Genealogical Studies. At the end of this video, I will provide a link to the online forms. The research checklist consists of five sections. Section 1, ancestor's name and reference number. Section 2, information from home. Section 2 will provide a list of items you can check for in your home. Section 3, outside sources to contact. Section 4, sources to research. Now, as you can see, this is an exhaustive list. Section 5 is comments on the front of the form and comments on the back of the form. Section 2 of the research checklist will help you get started with family information from home. Start with yourself and work backwards to the unknown. Talk to your parents and grandparents and relatives. Check out the interview form located at the National Institute of Genealogical Studies. I will provide a link at the end of this video so you are able to view and download forms from their website. Recording information. You have two options to record. You can choose genealogy software or paper. There are some individuals who prefer using paper. There are reasons to use paper since some software programs have become obsolete over time. I prefer software since it has flexibility in printing various reports and sharing your genealogy with others. I've included three genealogy programs as well as a link to other programs. Roots Magic has a PC and a Mac version. Legacy has a Windows version only. Reunion has a Mac version only. Roots Magic and Legacy have trial versions. Other words you can try before you buy. Reunion has no trial version. You can search the internet for a comparison of genealogy software programs. Accuracy is vital when recording information. As you can see, this is Add a Person from Roots Magic. So you're going to enter the full name first, middle name and last name, and nicknames. Four women supply the full maiden name, not a married name. Dates. You're going to write dates in this format. Day, month, year. As an example, 10 March 1885. If you enter that date in any other format, the software will prompt you to write the correct date. Enter full place names. 
for Canada, you're going to enter city, province, country. In the United States, city, county, state, and country. Recording information. Each ancestor in your genealogy software, you'll enter this information you've gathered and created. When you do this, you'll be populating the pedigree chart and the family group sheet. When doing genealogy work, you should keep track of each piece of information you collect and where you found it. Check in your genealogy software for help on how to cite sources. In some software packages, templates may be provided to help you cite your sources. A pedigree chart records the ancestors from whom you directly descended from. A pedigree chart does not include uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, or cousins of a person. It shows at a glance the progress you've made and what remains to be done. A pedigree chart can be printed and shared with your family, relatives, or a genealogical society. What are you recording on a pedigree chart? You're going to record the name, birth date and place, marriage date and place, death date and place. A family group record is created to show the names of the husband, wife, and children of a family. A well-documented family group record is the best tool you can use to get ideas about where to search for more information on a family. The best group record also shows many other events in the lives of each family member. The last form we'll discuss is the research plan. Most genealogy software programs do not have a template to do a research plan, so I had to develop my own. Here's a copy of my own research plan. Enter the name of the person you are researched with a reference number, and I'm using the reference number from Roots Magic. The name of my ancestor is William Hector Campbell. His reference number is number 17. The objective. What specifically do you want to learn about your ancestor? Be specific in narrowing down to a single question if possible. This helps you stay focused. My objective was William Hector Campbell murdered in Prince George, British Columbia. The belief is that William Hector Campbell was murdered in Prince George, B.C. Known facts. What have you already learned about your ancestor? This should include relationships, dates, places that are supported by original records. In this case, I've got his date of birth, his place of birth, date of marriage, he was never married, death date, 13 December 1957, age 59, parents, family has reported William Hector Campbell was murdered at Prince George, B.C. Is this factual? Working hypothesis. A hypothesis is a supposition or proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. What are the possible or probable conclusions that you hope to prove or possibly disapprove through your genealogy research? My working hypothesis, are the family stories correct about his death? Identified sources. Which records are the most likely to provide support for your hypothesis? Create a list of possible sources and identify the repositories including libraries, archives, societies, or published internet collections where these records and resources can be researched. My identified sources ask for unsolved cases at the RCMP in Prince George, B.C. Check with the Prince George 
Genealogical Society for Newspaper Obituaries. Death Registrations. Search for death registrations online at familysearch.org or ancestry.ca. Research Strategy. The final step of your genealogy research plan is to determine the best order to consult or visit the various repositories. My research strategy, I wrote a letter to the RCMP in Prince George, B.C., and I wrote another letter to the Prince George Genealogical Society. I searched familysearch.org and ancestry.ca for online death registrations. Here are my notes on my research plan. The RCMP has no unsolved cases in 1957. The Prince George Genealogical Society has no obituaries on William Hector Campbell. Ancestry.ca does not have online death registrations. Family Search has online death registrations. At this point, I printed out the death registration of William Hector Campbell from FamilySearch.org. This is a roadblock that I had been researching for about 50 years concerning was he murdered? However, he died of other means. A research log is a comprehensive list of what you've searched and what you plan to search for an ancestor. It will save you time because you don't need to search the same source again and again. Here's a breakdown of the research log. Name and objective at the top of the form. Column headings are date, goal, and result of your search. You could use the research log to smash through roadblocks. Here's an example how I use the research log to smash through my roadblock. I post a message on Ancestry dated January 1st, 2008. I received a reply on June 5th, 2015. The detailed reply was seven years later from an individual who was researching the Holderness family for 25 years. Jane Holderness is my fifth great-grandmother. Jane Deal is her maiden name. At last, I solved this roadblock. A resource not to be missed. A resource not to be missed is your living family relatives. When I started my family tree, I was fortunate enough to have a close friend who was a veteran in genealogy research work. I usually met with him for coffee on a Saturday morning and shared with him that I may have found my ancestors in a village in England. He suggested I place an ad in the village newspaper that I believed my ancestors were from. I did not have anything to lose, so I wrote a letter and sent it off to the village newspaper. About three to four weeks, I received a reply from a lady who confirmed we shared the same ancestors. We wrote back and forth for a few months. I finally decided I would go to England and meet these relatives. When I got to England, I met my relatives and we had a great time. I checked in with the local village newspaper editor and told her of my success. I asked her how much I owed her for the ad. She indicated she had placed many ads in the local newspaper, which are similar to mine, but I was the only one to visit her staff and her and thank them for what they had done. She said there was no charge for the ad. As a result of my visit, she will send a newspaper reporter to my cousin's residence and they will do a story on us, which included a picture in the local newspaper. Yes, we were featured in the local newspaper as celebrities. When I returned to Canada, a national newspaper picked up on the story and did a story on my research success on finding my relatives in England. When I started my family tree, I was working alone. 
I was researching in a vacuum. After joining a local genealogical society, I was no longer alone. One of the great benefits is networking. The opportunity to work with others who are also doing the same kind of research has benefited me greatly. Meetings, workshops, and conferences. I learned new research skills. The guest speakers at monthly meetings and annual workshops taught me how to prepare a research plan, how to evaluate evidence, and techniques to discover new sources and transcribe old documents. The Society has monthly meetings, workshops are held quarterly, semi-annual. They usually have annual conferences to hold elections and bring in special speakers. One of the primary resources of a local society is to index, abstract, or transcribe local records and publish the results in their journal and online. Members have access to online libraries and databases. In conclusion, the time to get started is now. Don't hesitate. Start your family tree now. Please visit us again and let us know how it's going. Please put your comments below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we will look forward to you visiting us again. Thank you.